making a Stuart Model Steam Plant Part 23, packing a valve gland, re-threading the other eccentric sheave, adjusting the valve timing and painting the Stuart logo. With this engine I have a sneaking suspicion that the stuffing glands are not packed, and to find out whether they are or not I'm using this special tool. It's a piece of MIG welding wire that I snipped off the end of my MIG welder. I've bent a loop on the end so it doesn't stick in my hand. Because when you cut MIG welding wire with a pair of side cutters, the ends are really sharp. And here's the tool in action. I'm poking it into the stuffing gland to see if there's any gland packing in there and it doesn't feel like there is. Stuffing glands and gland packing is used to stop a shaft moving in and out of a hole from leaking. At this point of the video, there will not be a girlfriend joke and I'm not going to make any references to contraception. And as we all know, the best form of contraception is a jubilee clip, also known as a hose clip. And while on the subject of clips, in this video clip, I've undone the gland nut. Now I'm going to pack the gland using some Teflon coated yarn. This is the modern equivalent of graphited yarn, because the modern equivalent of graphited yarn is not as good as the old stuff. And that's probably because in the old days I'm fairly sure that it must have contained something like asbestos but this stuff feels the same and does the same job, without the potential hazard of asbestosis. I always pack stuffing glands like this, so that the tail that ends up at the end of it isn't unravelled when you tighten the nut. I'm wrapping this small piece of Teflon coated yarn around the valve spindle in a clockwise direction. That is, if you look at the valve spindle from the end where the valve fork is. I will also assume, as this gland wasn't packed, the one at the other side, as well as the piston rod glands, will also not have any packing in them. This can be quite a fiddly job, but you have to persevere, and eventually the last piece of packing disappears into the gland, and then it's time to tighten the nut to hold everything in place. A quick caution about tightening gland nuts. Do not over-tighten them. Just nip them up until you feel some resistance, and then back them off about an eighth of a turn. A quick test to see whether the gland works all right, and yes it does, I can't see any oil coming out of there. As the exhaust piping isn't in place, I can only run the engine using one cylinder at a time, so it's always dragging another cylinder, and of course it's not self-starting. The engine seems to be running quite well, although I can detect some air still being blown to exhaust. I'm fairly confident that this is due to the fact that both of the slide valves are unmachined and are not the correct length. The inside and outside dimensions of a steam engine slide valve have to match the port face slots perfectly. The slide valves fitted to this engine are a little bit long on the outside dimension. And if I put the valves in the other way round, then they're a bit short on the outside dimension. Because it's a steam engine, it's running very well anyway but I would like to make sure that the valve timing is spot on. So what I'm going to do is make an episode for steam engines for beginners, because this really is an elementary problem that I see all the time, and not just on engines that have been made by beginners. I currently do not have a drawing for a double 10 or a number 10 steam engine, but really, after all these years, I don't need one. I know how they work. As I've just said, the inside and outside dimensions of the slide valve need to match the slots on the port face. The timing of this engine is retarded at both ends of the stroke. And by retarded, I mean that the compressed air is being admitted to the cylinder after the piston is on its way back down the cylinder. I will cover this subject in very high detail in the Steam Engines for Beginners episode. Back to this episode, I need to get rid of this slot-headed grub screw that holds the eccentric sheave onto the crankshaft. It's a 7BA grub screw and they've always been fitted to Stuart engines of this type and I don't know why because they always break. This is a rare example of one that isn't broken or chewed up. I removed the 7BA grub screw and threw it away. And here I'm re-threading the eccentric sheave using a 6BA tap to take a 6BA Allen head type grub screw. I have a box almost full of 6BA grub screws that were given to me by a friend many many years ago. One point worth mentioning. Now this part is threaded 6BA, that's good, because the grub screw is much stronger, but if you're too heavy handed with the Allen key, you can actually strip the thread in the eccentric sheave. But we're not going to do that, are we? Time to look at the slide valve. I've removed the steam chest cover, and this is what's inside. A slide valve and a block that operates it, which is threaded to allow adjustment. 
By rotating the valve spindle that is threaded into the block, you can move the position of the slide valve. Here I'm using the point of my scriber to centralize the eccentric rod in the valve fork, and now I can just fit the small pin. And yes, this is definitely a pin, it's not just a bolt. You do not want to use bolts, they must have a parallel shank, which is threaded just at one end. It's never a good idea to use screw threads as bearings. Here I'm setting the timing of the slide valve, and now it's moving over the ports equidistantly at both ends of the stroke. As a general rule, set the largest lobe of the eccentric sheave at a 90 degree angle to the crank pin. Sometimes you may need to advance or retard the engine to get the performance that you need. After refitting the valve fork pin, in this clip I'm fitting the lock nut at the other side. The final job is to refit the four 7BA nuts, and once again do not over tighten them. The engine seems to be running slightly better now, but even with the valve set in the correct position relative to the stroke, they're still not right. Both of the slide valves are too long from top to bottom. If you want to see the solution to this problem, please watch the episode that I will be making tomorrow for Steam Engines for Beginners. Here I'm refitting the steam chest and steam chest cover, followed by running the engine to see if there's an improvement. Now the timing is correct, it's running much better than it did previously. And once I've shortened the slide valves, it should be fine. The final job in this episode is to apply some paint to the Stuart logo in the ends of the steam chest covers. My colour preference for this job is red, either buffer beam red from Phoenix Precision Paints or even Humbrol Gloss Enamel Red. A word of caution though, do not apply too much paint. If I carry on applying this much paint, then what's likely to happen is the paint will crinkle once it dries. I'll be giving these parts two coats of paint. When you're doing this job, if you get paint on the front part as I have here, don't worry because it's very easy to clean off simply by wiping the front surface with a clean cloth. Here's the story so far. This is the engine painted green with a black base and the cladding's been painted with satin black paint. The red paint is still wet, so this is really a shot of paint drying. Stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Main Steam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.